Welcome, everyone. Good afternoon. It is Sunday, April 29th, 2018, and welcome Already? to another... Oh, my gosh. Already, brother, another episode of Beyond the Thin Blue Line with myself and the one, the only, my co-host, the Doc. Doc, what's That's going great. on, brother? Thanks for joining me. Oh, not a problem. Like I say, always a pleasure. I had a, a great brunch today with the family. It was it was quite excellent. Good food. Nice to see everyone. Yeah, other than it was a good day. Beautiful outside. Awesome, man. Hey, I know you're taking time out of your busy schedule. You're studying for those finals like my daughter Ashley is. So, dude, I really appreciate it. I don't have to go solo. I was a little worried about it, <laughs> but uh, I have faith in you, brother, and you came through as always, brother. No problem. No problem. So, dude, today's show is a good show. Really? As you know, I'm all about the community policing, right? So, yeah, so does that imply that we have bad shows because today's a good show? Nah, we always have a good show. Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, because I remember I was talking about it in the last show and a lot of uh, our crew members at Black Sheep Bravo was like, oh, I don't know what, what my police department does. And uh, so what I did was with the help of our intern who will remain anonymous because sometimes I don't even know who or he or she is, but... Rajesh. Uh, yeah, Rajesh. There you go. Rajesh. I actually, me and my Rajesh, we did the research and we found out each crew member's police department community services, brother. Although when Rajesh was calling the police departments, didn't they like flag him for terrorism or something? And now he's, you know what? he's been I haven't up. seen him. So holy crap, what happened? Maybe ICE got to him, man. It had to have, I don't know. Damn, man. Well, Steve, you're out there. Let, let, help us out, Steve. Maybe you could be our intern while Rajesh is doing his time. Oh, yeah. So, Doc, will you be surprised, man, out of all the ones that I researched, your police department was by far the best decaled wow. Illinois police department, man. You know, that would make sense for all the taxes I pay. Holy crap. <laughs> man, oh, man, your department is unbelievable. And, of course, I'm going to give you the address located at 700 West Lincoln Highway, DeKalb, Illinois, 60115. You guys have an awesome police chief, Chief Lowry Jean. Unbelievable Lowry Jean, person. Huh? Unbelievable person. And we're just supposed him, to be on this right now. I'm telling you, so we're going to have to go without him, man. Dude, All right, let's go you're the department. Well. Yep, there pull it go. up on that screen. There you go. Look at that. Look at the website of the DeKalb, Illinois Police Department. Wonderful information. And if you look on the left hand, you don't have to click it because I did the research for you. You see community services. Those are the services that your police department offers the community. And I will read them for you. So you don't really got to click on it. But just for our viewers can understand when they go to this website for this wonderful, wonderful police department, you see where it says community services program. Look at that. That is unbelievable. Whole list bro. There. And I have to have to read these uh, services because these viewers that live by your neck of the woods, Doc, I want them to know that the youth... Oh, there's viewers that live by me. That's there you go. Me. Those youth that live by you and those guardians of those youth, whether they're mom, dad, or guardians, this is what's out there for them. So the first program I'll speak about is Adopt a School. So officers are assigned to patrol the schools before, during, and after the school to give a police presence and to create a relationship with the students, teachers, and parents. Wonderful. That's what I'm all about. Does that they have no shootings? There you go, man. They have the alert decalb. I explained to you what that is. Alert decalb keeps residents and travelers informed on potentially hazard situations involving weather, traffic, and other emergencies. That's actually pretty nice. I signed up for it. Cool. Hey, if you do, you got a bike, Doc? I do not have a bike. If you had a bike, they have bike registration. Citizens of the Calb are encouraged to register their bicycles to assist the police in returning the bike should it be recovered. Wow. Get yourself a bike, Doc. Ride to school. Save That's the environment. There's no way. <laughs> no way. I'm way too lazy for that. <laughs> they got what we have. Remember I told you NYPD has a summer camp for the kids? Yeah. Well, guess what? Your guys have it too. It's called Camp Power. What? This program teaches youth and families multiple ways to util utilize a vast array of recreational resources and assist them in other life choices. Interesting. Damn, I'm a walking billboard, billboard for your department, bro. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, we all know what National Night Out is. What do you... National what Night is, Out? What is TIPS? What is TIPS? T-I-P-S. 
Where at? Where at? Tips, tips. There we go. I'll read it to you. Tips. In November of 2003, the police department was approached by the Ben Gordon Mental Health Center regarding a grant they received from the Department of Juvenile Justice. The grant was to be used in an effort to curb alcohol and related incidents involving underage violators. That's the mm -hmm. TIPS program. Okay. And, and we then, all uh, know what National Night Out is. Like I said before, yeah. every police department in the world and the nation uh, does National Night Out. And DeKalb, of course, does a wonderful job with National Night Out. It's always well, a belief of, on the, August. The tobacco compliance checks here. Um, Re uh, that's actually can you funny. read that is or you want me to read the tobacco compliance checks um the grocery store that i shop at got uh got i, I don't know uh, they got caught selling tobacco to underage children that's it that's and it so so did a few other establishments in the decalb area but I mean, it's no whatever that's what they do as far as uh, checking these establishments make sure they don't sell to underage people hey you guys got right along programs too man yes yeah, this this uh yeah right there Right along programs. And dude, this is Again, very important. I'm, I'm gonna pass. This is very important for you fem for the females out there. I mean, we, we're not gonna joke with this one. It's called RAD. Rape Aggression Defensive Training. RAD are self defense classes for women to enhance the option of self defense. Damn, you guys are on fire, bro. You also have hey, look at it here. You have neighborhood watch. Dude, you guys are on fire. And I guess oh, hey, I watch hey, my doc. neighborhood all right. I'm sitting there in the blinds. <laughs> you, that means you're part of it. That means you're part of it. Oh no, you it's got... more of a creepy watch than anything. Are you a hunter there, Doc? A hunter? Yeah. Yeah, of course I have my hunting license. Well, your department has a hunter safety course as well. I've never hunted though. Don't like oh. Just because I have the license doesn't mean I hunt. Yeah. Hey, but you know what? You got a license. That's important. Yes, sir. And my overall fam f uh, favorite, favorite one, because I believe so much in this one, is you guys have a chaplain's office. And I said right. clergy is so important to the police department. So it said this program was developed to provide a better service to the, uh, to the citizens of DeKalb, as well as the department personnel in times of personal crisis. Mm -hmm. A lot of cops, you know, unfortunately, we got a lot of cops that commit suicide. Uh, or they're going through issues, especially those officers that come from the military, those military uh, men and women that prior military and they come home from the war or they're separated from the military and then they get into the uh, law enforcement community. They go through a lot of struggles at home, whether it's financial or, or family, and the chaplain's office gives a wonderful, wonderful um, resources and tips on getting you uh, get back on board like we do at the Roundtable Show, brother. Yep. Hey, uh, shout out to Steve there. He said, what up? Oh, Our what up, Steve? Fan. Steve, man, I'll be right over when the show is over. Cause I know you need some help in your backyard, brother. But thanks for my backyard. You mean like the actual backyard and not like uh, yeah. some homophobic stuff here? Or no, no homo here, yeah, man. Or His actual backyard. Okay. Steve, not, get not your brother, man. Backyard. <laughs> Where's Massimo? Tell Massimo to tune into our show, man. Seriously. We so that's... So that's the DeKalb County Police Department, wonderful. Yeah. Dep and hey, Doc, you should be proud of your police department, man. Look at all that shit. Big I shout out. Yes, I am proud of them. All right. Salute all right. to DeKalb. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the Spaniards, neck of the wood. This one is the town I'm... of Cherville Police Thank Department. Thank you for reading that because I cannot pronounce it. My life depended on it. Hey, no worries. I got your back. All right, so that department is located at 25 East Joliet Street in Boom. what? Sherryville? Sherryville, Indiana. 46375. Their chief of police is, it's weird, I think they're looking for a chief because this says interim chief, Dennis Zaraki. Zagraki. Hmm. So where, I guess he's in training. It says Sergeant Interim Chief. So I guess that's what they call it. Okay. So. Not a lot of programs, but they do have programs, uh, Spaniard. So, Spaniard, just so you can know, that's what we do here beyond the thin blue line. Me and Doc, we're on board, bro. We got you covered. You guys have the Citizens Police Academy. You have the D.A.R.E. program, Drug Abuse Resistance Education Program. I don't think you have... D.A.R.E. is really effective anyways. You don't think so, bro? No, not really. I mean, it might have an impact on, on some, but, I mean... 
I, I took Dare, and I, I think I, I took it at such a young age that I don't remember well, anything you, man. from the program. But, well, however, you. it was more of like an introduction of uh, what drugs are, to be honest. Well, if you took that program, that means your parents are doing the right thing because you actually took the program. So, well, hey, they got they got an Explorer program, dude, like we do in NYP. They got Explorers. They got something called Morning Call. I don't know what that is. I guess uh, Spanish you're going to have to let us know what Morning Call is. National Night Out, they have. Women's Self-Defense. And they got what we established recently in the NYPD with where we partnered up with I'm not going to give a shout out to the institution because, like I said, they're not paying a show. But we went to a local coffee shop, and it was called Coffee with a Cop. And Spaniards, the police department, offered the same thing where we can get community, interact with us. We call it Coffee with a Cop, but I'm not going to plug them. They're not giving us no money. So let's just say the local Damn, coffee great. shop. Give us money, and we'll plug you. Hell yeah. We'll plug they you got, real hard. You damn straight, bro. We don't play here at Black Sheep Bravo. Cop. <laughs> Cop camp. They got a summer camp as well. Holy moly. And remember when I said we have auxiliary? What we want, where Mrs. Devil Dog wanted to be an auxiliary, and I was like, hail to the no. Well, yeah, they have. Is she, is she still going to do that? She better not, bro. And her and Steve better stop that nonsense. Cause, no, she has my support. Do it. I know she got your support, so she's happy about that. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> so they got VIPs, Volunteers in Police Service. That's their auxiliary. Regular citizens not being paid but helping out i guess they want to be cops being buffs whatever you want to call them okay so the officer that's in charge of the dare program is jeff zemberski officer jeff D zemberski very uh really nice guy I had a nice chat with him on the phone and um you have tim arver i'm gonna say it right arverantis he's a corporal regarding training so good guys like i said i called them up you can call them to the number is 219-322-5000. Let them know you want to get involved. Or if you have a kid, get them involved in their program. So they go to Spaniard. Let's, enough of Spaniard. Let's go on to Chuck's police department. <laughs> enough of Spaniard. Get enough out of here, Spaniard. peasant. Oh, hey, Kokomo. Now, that's weird. I think I was in a, it sounds like I was in Alaska, right? Holy Kokomo. rapist stash. Look at this guy right here. There you go. <laughs> you see that? I see it, man. There we wow. go, Kokomo Police Department. And there we go. The number to there is 765-457-1105. Uh, there, I, I, they I, have I'm, Chief I'm Robert Baker. Do you see him? Here. I'm sorry? That's Chief Robert Baker on the top. Yes. And yeah, he's been I, there I'm since... You're away from this porn stash. Yo, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid no. talking about that because I know you're flipping out over that. But Chief oh, Robert man. Baker has been there since August 31st, 1987, doing public service. And they do have a community services unit, if you can shy away from that porn star. Uh, his name is Captain Kevin Summers. He's in charge of the community service program. And his number is 765, for those viewers I want to know, 765 Four five six seven three three nine. Let me tell you a little bit what Captain Summers offers in his program. So you got to bear with me because Double Dog's eyes are not too bad. So yeah, I got the freaking glasses. They're gonna come on. All right, All right. glasses are on. There we go. Captain Kevin Summers. He does offer the uh, community service program, and let me tell you a little bit of stuff what he offers. Uh, let me just read about this, Captain Sir. The Community Services Unit is primarily responsible for the development and coordination of programs designated to assist in the promotion of a responsible community and to achieve a partnership with those who we serve. The same thing like we do in NYPD, try to partner up with the community and the uh, businesses and residents. So they do a lot of good stuff here. Uh, it says Kokomo Police Department will deliver its message to the public in a variety of ways. Hey, they, they give tours of the headquarters. If you would like a tour of the headquarters, like I said, you can boring. reach out to Kevin Summers. Not much, but hey, you know what? They're doing things over there in Kokomo. Kokomo seems small, so is it like a one-room tour? Like, hey, welcome. Right. This, is our, this is our room. You know what? Let's this have our Chuck. Tour. End of tour. Dude, let's have Chuck take a tour and report back to us. Oh, that's a good idea. 
You know what? You can there you go, the Chuck. Car. Take a tour of the Kokomo Police Department and get back to uh, the Doc and I so we can discuss it on the Roundtable show. Next is, let's go with Wentzie, Porter County. All right, let's do it. Wentzie Whoa. Wentz. Nice homepage. What do you think? I, I think this is like one of the most legit homepages that there is so far. It looks like a college campus, dude. I, I, I think it looks like a college yeah, campus. They're all a bunch of frat guys anyways. There we go. Porter County Sheriff's Office. The sheriff is David Reynolds. And they got Chief Jeff Biggs. Okay, you can on the website you can see their bio. They tell you all about what they do and everything. And they're located at 2755 IN-49 Valparaiso, Indiana, I think. Valparaiso? Hey, damn, there you. That's why I need you here, brother. And the area code is 46383. Wherever that so is. So his apartment is it's pretty cool. Um, they have not a lot, but they have a summer camp program and you can, the ages are nine to 14. They'll watch your kid from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's only a $40 application fee is due by July 6th. So those people that live by Wednesday's neck of the woods, get your kids over there and get some free summer camp and you have the freaking summer off from your kids from at least from, from eight to the time, you, uh, 4 p.m. You can't go wrong, man. Hey, that, that's uh, some pretty cheap uh, child care. Not care, Dude, but, uh, $40 application free, and it's a free uh, camp. Hey, daycare. What the... Ah, that's it. There you go. Ding. Make your payments to the Porter County Sheriff's Office, as they state on the website. Let me tell you what they just, they do with these kids. They get, a, they get to look at what SWAT does, canine, helicopters, crime scenes, and team building. What a way to provide wow. for the youth, man. That's Wednesday, a lot of Wednesday, stuff. Wednesday, if you got kids, Wednesday, send them over there or have your viewers or our viewers. And you know what? You're welcome, people from Wednesday's neighborhood. Doc and I did you a public service. Yes. A public service. Enough of Wednesday. Let's go to Double O. Okay. What has he got going on in his neck of the woods? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Double O, double O. Is this we need really to get the involved. There is basically not much going on in your department. Plainfield Police Department, located at 1075 West Main Street, Plainfield, the Indiana. Yet. There you go. Eric O. 46168. Uh, chief Daryl oh, Krieger is the chief. And his number, if you want to call for anything, youth uh, services, is 317-838-3565. Dude, there's nothing much to talk about for Double O's uh, uh, police department, but they do have the D.A.R.E. program, which most departments have, and they got juvenile programs. Because abstinence is the way. That's about it, man. I really can't say much about abstinence your, your spot. Plainfield, man, you need to get with the program. Double O, get with the program, take a visit over there, and let us know if they have more youth programs besides D.A.R.E and juvenile program. So, you know what? That's it for Double O. We're going to skip him. Let's go over to Ogre's okay. Town. Ooh. Honor, courage, integrity, respect, pride. <laughs> Ogre it is Downers Grove, Illinois. Uh, they're located at, uh, what, 825 Burling Burlington Avenue? Uh, sure, yeah. There you go. And they got the police chief, Shannon Gillette. I, it's a female. Shannon Gillette. Like the know. shaving. She's the police chief. You wonder if there's any relation. Does Maybe, she get free razors? But hey, let's let's look into that. Let's have our mm -hmm. intern look into that. But they have a deputy chief of operations called Michael DeVars and the deputy chief of support services, James McGreal. And you know what? Out of the whole department, only two community affairs officers. Only two. But yet, the website doesn't really tell... I mean, yeah, you see the annual reports, related links, but doesn't really give you much about community service. No wonder Ogre turned out the way he turned out, man. Damn, let's just blame that. He needs Jesus. Yo, Ogre, what are you going to do with your kids, Ogre? <laughs> I don't understand. You can't even get free summer camp at the police department, Ogre. Holy shamoly. So that's it for Ogres. There you have it. We just went through each and every one of the crews at Black Sheep Bravo Police Department, we and we it. shared it. It was brutal, but we got through it, guys. We Angel got through here. it. 
So th th there you have it. I mean, what do you think, Doc? I mean, yeah, it's important to have some type of, uh, you know, community service in the East Department. And let me tell you something. Your department at DeKalb blew me away. Fantastic job that Chief is doing. So hats off to your police department, brother. Well, is it really the, the chief that's doing this, or is it um, grants or money that they're getting to do this stuff? But remember, the chief is the one that reaches out to get these grants, and it's always mm. the chief responsible for the day-to-day -day operations. Like we have, uh, you know, O'Neill, and um, O'Neill is the police commissioner, and he's the one who implements all these programs, and he has staff under him that gets everything put together and... Um, that's what makes it the police department. He's either your chief okay. or your, and in my case, is the commissioner, man. So, hey, yeah, you know, there you have it, man. Impressive. It's impressive. I, I think so what's most going of the on? problem comes in where I, I had no idea about any of these programs, to be honest. Uh, they're they're failing in their outreach, I guess. They have all these programs, but if no one knows about them, do they do the, do the programs actually exist? Exactly. That's why I thought it was important to do a show about uh, our crews of various police departments because a lot, like you said, you didn't know all these services that they offer, you know. Uh, so if, if we can just throw that out to our viewers, maybe they can get a better understanding. You know, I it's not because I'm up. in law enforcement. I don't want to keep plugging NYC. You know, this show is about all law enforcement. So what better way to do well. it than to just do a shout out to all our uh, crews I, I think well the one thing is for sure i think i might consider taking that rape defense class i, I think i could I, I think i would excel in that class you know what it might help you with the elevator girl what do you think man oh that's a great idea tubby yeah oh man bonus she, she comes on to me i just be like Hiya! that's it no. man that's a hey, believe it or not it happens to us men too and we need to be prepared yeah, that's right. And getting so an erection is not consent. That is true. That's true, man. It's a spinal reflex, but whatever. So let me know what's going on. Any any news about where you live at? Any police law enforcement news? Is a you know misconduct or heroism? There's always something in NYC with a cop doing something wrong. Or okay, well, I mean, to do something look at wrong. New York City few million people compared to uh, 20,000 in DeKalb. Yeah. So, of course, you guys are going to have stories. I mean, there's... I don't know of anything, really, that's going on here. Um, a cop might have, I don't know, downed a dozen donuts or something. <laughs> you just see it. But you see it on social media, man. It doesn't have to be where we're from. There's always <laughs> something going on with negativity regarding uh, law enforcement. So, like, in our, in our case, and then why the media's fault. It's the media. And a lot of, th I keep saying, man, don't always believe what you hear or see on TV or the radio, man. Until yeah. you wait and let, let, let it take place. They and just let it want take to be the, the first ones with that breaking story. So everyone goes always. to them to watch and yep. give them the ratings. Yeah, I don't get it, man. It works. happens all the time, man. So, you know, in our, in our department, if, um, a cop does, let's say if there's a, something happens and a cop does something wrong and he or she's penalized, the, after that fact, there's always a, a, we, have a we have a guide. Well, well <laughs> penal, we call it a patrol guide. So you could be found guilty criminally. However, you can still face departmental charges like in the instance of Sergeant Hugh Barry. Uh, let me tell you a little bit of Sergeant Barry. Oh, okay. So Sergeant yeah, Barry he's... was recently tried for murder of uh, EDP, which we call emotionally disturbed person, where he shot and subsequently killed. Uh, uh, you know, she was an elderly lady for going after him. Elderly? With a what do you mean by elderly? Like 70, 80? She was in her 70s. Ooh. And she had a history of, uh, you know, mental illness. And I like his, I don't want a Monday morning quarterback. I, I don't know what was in, in his mind. I can't, you know, judge. All I'm saying is, he, she, she she came at him with a bat, and he shot and killed her. Now, wow. in the police department, when we go to our range, when the range, to do our you know annual qualification, one of the maps, one of the figures that we have to shoot at, is a person yielding a baseball bat, and we're taught, shoot, 
So yeah, we're taught you coming at it That's with a base breath to shoot. So I think that played a, a major role in his trial. As we know, he chose a bench trial rather than a jury trial. Do you think that was smart by him? Ex very smart. His lawyers did a absolutely right by him by going bench trial. So um, he was not guilty. Not guilty on all counts. So uh, now he's not guilty criminally. But guess what? Now he got to face department charge. And I'm going to show you our patrol guy. You, you're going to see it here first on Beyond the Thin Blue Line, man. It's the yellow pages. You see this? This is all procedures, guidelines. It's called the patrol guide. This is a condensed version. Wow, so, it's like the Webster's Dictionary. Let me tell you something. So if you want to take, if you want to pass the sergeant's exam, the lieutenant's exam, the captain's exam, this is what the exams go by. Study this. Oh, wait, so guide. you don't have to suck dick in order to get those promotions. Is that what you're saying? You have to know your shit? Know your shit. Uh, know your shit. And okay. you know how much I, I hate school, what so... If, what if you wanted I, to I take can't. that other route to where you can give someone a blowjob? Would, would you just throw Hell to there. the no. No. Oh, okay. Hell to the no. <laughs> Which is why I'm I'm a detective. I can't see studying for these things. And, you know, if like I'm not going to hate. If you study, you pass, God bless you. You know, get promoted. Do your thing. Godspeed. But I can't see looking through all this crap. Every I mean, I can't do it, man. But... When someone does something like that, like Sergeant Barry, there's always an addition to this huge book, and you have to adhere to it. So it has everything in this book. So there'll be that'll be on, on shooting. So you'll see self-defense, you'll see shootings, you'll see the use of deadly force. That's all in this patrol guy. So, and you know what? The the defense attorney gets this as well, and they'll say, hey, according to patrol guide section, blah blah blah, you violated this. So you you win criminally, but you get screwed by violating one of these patrol guide procedures. So, you know, he's not out of the woods. And I always say, you know, it's not yeah. easy being a cop, man. You just got to do the right thing. And sometimes even if you do the right thing, this job manages to do that. And that brings my morale down. And sometimes, you know, I get upset. But you know what? This is the job I took. I just do my job. I do it correctly, the best of my ability. And just let everything flow. What you know, in your job? What, what do you got? Or, or whatever in, in everyday life. Like when you had a job back in. What did you do before the military? Put it that way. <laughs> um, not really much. I work at McDonald's. But, I mean, they have, they have procedures at McDonald's. They have standard mm -hmm. operating procedures at McDonald's, like the patrol guy. That's so You don't you don't freaking wash your hands. That's a violation. Bye, Felicia. There you go. So that happens, man. And, you know, Actually, I get our, our McDonald's is kind of ghetto, though. So uh, there's a lot of shady shit going down there. <laughs> I'll just not surprise me, bro. It happens, man. I don't even know. But it, apparently it's gotten better over the recent years. So but who knows? It had to get <laughs> much, much worse before it got better. Yeah. Which but is man, unfortunate. Yo, it's just it gets you frustrated at times. There's times, man, tell you like last week. I was like so pissed off because you, you got to find that balance when when you when you have a supervisor and us in the military we got a chain of command and we we learn to follow orders take a lot of bullshit and there's times when you, you got supervisors that don't know what the fuck they're doing but you know you just stay you know disciplined and just do as you're told and sometimes you just got to take it <laughs> You know, and I, that's why I tell my partner, calm down, you know, maybe you might not like it, but is it worth engaging in an argument? No, it's not mm -hmm. worth it, man. So it is what it is. You know, it's just an exam. You take the exam, you're promoted to sergeant. So that because that happens, that doesn't mean they're better than you. That means they passed the test and you got to respect the rank. Yes, but, you know, experience is everything, brother. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what's going on, man? Anything else happening in your neck? What's going on with school? Uh, finals next week. Oh, wait, no. The Next week is my final week. Final class instructor period week. And then after that is or are all the finals for my classes. So it's it's been a little bit busy. I got a, uh, one more paper that I have to write. Uh, but other than that, I mean, so far so good. Just, just busy. Yeah. Yeah, man. Damn, Ashley's coming home soon, man. 
Very nice. Very I'm going nice. to go to D.C. and uh, damn, that's it. No more empty nesters, man. So four years went like that, bro. Four <laughs> years went like that. Well, like, you're not really doing anything, so I don't know how fast that is. That's true. <laughs> You know what? D.C. has some excellent police stuff, but their Metro Police is awesome. They really are. Cool people, man. I had a chance um, to meet one of them. Is the, no, never mind. Uh, but D.C., they have a lot of uh, tourist attractions there, if you will. Yeah. I, I was just recently there over the summer, last summer, and it was, it was nice. We had a good time. Well, that's what I plan on doing is visit when I go pick her up. All right, I'm going to stay the whole weekend there and just let her show me all around D.C., Oh, yeah. this, maybe that's going to be like her last time there, so unless she gets a job over there. But I plan to tour D.C. Hopefully I don't get in trouble when I do it. Traffic there was a bitch. Oh, my worst. God. It was bad. The worst, man. The worst. Yeah. It, it took us a couple hours to get out of the city. Wow. So we got uh, Steve still watching us? I don't know. Steve's here. He's there. Steve, He's is you watching us, man? Tell tell us about what's going on in, in your life, man, with your interactions with the police. I know you were bitter. I hope it got better and you took the advice that the devil dog and Doc gave you last show and get involved. So if you're still watching, Steve, chime in. Let us know. Where have you done besides, you know, getting upset that your local police department is not always there for you? Mm -hmm. Hopefully you listen to us, man, and got it. Get involved, but just don't get the Mr. Devil Dog involved. I don't want her going around, walking around with no freaking uh, bag that she thinks she's a fucking cop. So keep her out of it, and I don't want the doc to keep encouraging her too, man. What? You don't control me. <laughs> Damn it! That's what she's telling me, man. <laughs> well, isn't she the boss, anyways? Of course. I'm not afraid to admit it. I, I do what Mr. Double Dog says, man. Hell yeah. Her and my, my my three dogs, man. They they're my kids, man. They they run they run everything. I came uh, to my dogs. Maybe next time I have a video of of dogs playing around. It, it's it's a funny video. Maybe uh, I'll have that for next time. Yeah, man. But this was good. Like I said, I wanted to just keep focusing on community police and uh see what you guys go through so what I'm, I'm probably gonna do next show is let's come up with you know something more comical you know some funny clips that happens uh in the various agencies and law enforcement because there's a lot of funny shit going out there man okay. a little bit of comical stuff rather than you know us focusing i mean i think we've done so much about community and the youth i think they got it i think the viewers got it yes hey i'm just here for the ride man <laughs> <laughs> you, you tell me where this train is turning, and that's where we're going. If you that's know what, what we might. do, man. That's what we do. <laughs> and, of course, yeah. I can't remind our viewers to always turn in to tomorrow. Tomorrow's show is Monday Motivation with Ogre, Andy Spaniard. What? Man, that, is it I mean, really that motivational, though? I wouldn't say it's motivational, but, um, hey, that's just the name. Monday Motivation with Ogre, and it that's starts, fair. what, 7 Central, 8 Eastern? He tries, yes, he tries to be motivational. But I think he just, just, just missed the bar. <laughs> yeah. But dude, and I'm never... probably gonna hear about this again too. Yeah, He's that's why I want to give it to him, man. He missed Friday night's roundtable, so you know we gotta fuck with him. This is your fault, Ogre. Yep. Everything is your fault. But fear not. On Tuesday, we got Double O, his new show. Double O is on fire, man. He stole Friday's night roundtable, man. He it stole the good, show. It's a good show. His fucking bartending skills are excellent, man. So Double O show will, will start again on Tuesdays. And then we got uh, the Spaniard. He does his intrusive thoughts. Did you check out the last intrusive thoughts by Spaniard with the trophy wife? Uh, ah, no, I did not. But you I, I'm going it. to. You got to <laughs> see it. It's just funny as hell, man. Just him and the trophy wife sitting back, you know, drinking a few cold ones, just talking about nonsense that's that's the spaniard okay and then friday is of course our friday night round table show with all of us doing our shenanigans man yes we, we, we had a good time last friday bro it was good i enjoyed it so like we got to invite our viewers to i, I know Span, spaniard's trying to wear us off facebook but we need people from facebook to reach out to us 
So you got to like our Facebook page at Black Sheep Bravo and then go into our YouTube page and click that button on YouTube. Subscribe. Subscribe to us on YouTube and let's get, you know, and keep share. Share the shit out of our shows. We got to get bigger, bigger and bigger. So subscribe, like on Facebook and um, let us know what you think. Let us know uh, uh, Gmail, Black Sheep Bravo at gmail.com. Uh, questions questions comments so if you can whatever you wanted to talk about the show is based uh, for veterans made up of us veterans for veterans and at black and uh, our show beyond the thimble line with me and doc it's all about law enforcement but we can always talk about other shit whatever you wanted to talk about that's what we're here for uh what else you want to what, what how, how do you want to end it? how long we've we been on so uh, we've, we've been, been on long enough on. yeah, yeah so there's no set without, time limit here Let's go with our final thoughts, man. So I'm going to throw it over to you. Give your final thought or whatever you want to speak about, mm -hmm. any comment. Uh, what's your final thought, Doc, From uh, to end us at Beyond the Thin Blue Line with me and you? Um, uh, abstinence is not the answer. Education is the answer. Uh, fucking powerful, bro. Yes. Powerful. Thank you for that final thought. Education. Damn, Doc. I like that, bro. That inspired me, man. I hope that inspires our viewers. Yes. Hopefully. Yeah, so... Uh, our three my viewers that we have. Yay! Yes. That's what's up, man. My final thought is no matter what you're going through in life, sometimes you might get upset. Sometimes you get pissed off. I was pissed off last week, dealt with some issues at work, but um, I remember calling the Spaniard. And, uh, you know, he, he was there. He was there for me, just like I would call you and every, every other member of our show. That's what we're here for, vets helping sure. vets. And um, I called Spaniard up, you know, and we had a nice talk. And sometimes that's all you need, to call and talk to someone. You know, far too many veterans are taking their lives. Far too many law enforcement officers are taking their lives for nonsense. We got to do what Ogre says. Don't sweat the small stuff. I'm going to steal that from Ogre. Don't oh, sweat the small he's stuff. Gonna, he's going to break and I, That's why I want to fuck with him. You know, I'm stealing your freaking line, Ogre. And um, oh, He's going to be pissed about that one. Whew. I hope so, man. So uh, Steve. definitely rely on you people. <laughs> so there's people out there, man. That's what we do here at Beyond the Thin Blue Line with myself and Doc. We, we, we talk about whatever's going on in the law enforcement community and uh, other, other stuff. But this is show is, is for veterans, from veterans like the Doc and I. Here you got... A Navy guy like Doc, a double dog Marine like the double dog, giving, giving entertainment. And look at all the wonderful stuff we provided to our viewers today. All about, you know, community services. And that last but not cold, least. Man. Yeah, man. Last but not least. Always, always wear your vest, my law enforcement community. So on behalf of the Doc, go <laughs> Wait, for it. Don't what? What was I going to say? You were going to say don't. So I stop. Oh, yeah. Uh for the law enforcement people, don't put a dildo in your butt. Never do that. That that, Never. that won't be cool. That That's won't be cool. Fine. So I am Just the double sure dog on clear. behalf of the Doc and I and Beyond the Tim Blue Line. I want to wish you all a happy and, and safe Sunday. Doc, you're a character today, brother. So be safe, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Peace.